Energy 808, the cutting edge. We're here with Marco Mangelsdorf, our co-host, and Eric Gleason, formerly of Next Era. Is that the right way to put it, Eric? Formerly of Next Era? Uh, not to my knowledge, Jay. I'm still employed by Next Era. <laughs> Okay, all right. Formerly, formerly of Next Era, as it was in Hawaii. I remember the day I met you, as a matter of fact, at the Plaza Club. I don't know if you remember that. I do. Yeah. So uh, we're going to have an introduction, if you don't mind, Eric. This may take, uh, you know, maybe 40, 50 minutes, uh, but uh, Marco is, is, has been planning this for some time. So, Marco, uh, why don't you introduce Eric Gleason? Well, thank you so much, Jay, and thank you, Eric, very much for being on with us today. I really appreciate it. It's something I've looked forward to these past months. And Eric and I go back a ways. Uh, we first met sometime mid-2015 when the uh, attempt of next year to buy Hawaiian Electric Industries was in full full play. Uh, I met him at uh, my favorite restaurant in Hilo, uh, Hilo Bay Cafe, along with uh, Jen Zelko, my friend from Helco. And I thought, who is this guy who's so much more handsome, so much better dressed than I, so so just on top of things, I thought to myself, I got to get to know him. And we stayed in touch through the course of the the attempts uh, to, uh, next year to buy Hulk, uh, Hawaiian Electric, and we stayed in touch afterwards. And I'm, I'm very pleased that uh, I've developed a friendship with Eric. I, I think very highly of him. He's a really solid, good guy. And I'm glad that uh, despite his company's, um, shall we say, last lack of success at buying one electric industries that we have, uh, we've uh, had a nice friendship. And I really appreciate Eric and what he does, what he's done, what he will do, uh, past, present, and future. So uh, thank you so much, Eric, for being with us. And I think my first question to you will be, what in the heck have you been doing with yourself since that fateful day, mid-July 2016, when the news came down and that our Public Utilities Commission decided not to, to go with the, uh, the acquisition. Well, thanks, Marco and Jay, first of all, for having me on the show. Marco, for the kind words. Um, well, the first thing we did, so, so uh, my wife and my three kids were, were living with me in Hawaii at the time. And the first thing we did is um, uh, I took two months off and the first month of it, uh, we spent more time in Hawaii. We 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 loved Hawaii, and we wanted to we wanted to actually even spend a little more time in the islands. So we did that. Then packed the kids off, um, and my wife and I spent a month in Japan. And with two months of having decompressed, I was ready to go back to work and went back to Next Era in Florida and um, uh, continued with a job. Really, I've been doing for the last nine years, which is building up. A utility business around the country. It's a it's focused on high voltage transmission, and uh, you know that's what I've been doing. Well, you know, I, I wanted to ask you too. I mean, I, you know, this was traumatic for a lot of people who wanted to see that deal done, including me, for example. Um, I told you that before, and, and um, I was I was traumatized by the by the way it went south. Uh, not only that it went south, but the way it went south. You know, the kind of things that people said and did, and the way the community, if you will, handled it. And I, I've, I've always wondered, we haven't talked in a couple of years, I've always wondered how you felt about that. Uh, how about a walk down memory lane? How do you feel oh. about what happened? Is this my therapy? <laughs> uh, you know, it was tough. Uh, it, it was, uh, to quote Dickens, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Uh, it was a year, a year and a half that, in some ways, I'm, I'm so grateful that we had. Uh, Hawaii's an amazing place, as both of you know, as, as I uh, have come to appreciate. And, um, you know, that part of it was fantastic, just getting to know people from all walks of life and, and the different islands. Um, and the support we had from people like, your, like yourself, uh, less so Marco, but, you know, I've forgiven him. Um, <laughs> But, you know, then there was the other side of it, of dealing with politics. And, and frankly, for, for me personally, um, you know, I, 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 I bore a lot of guilt. Um, I felt really bad that I, I, I led my company in here. Um, uh, you know, some things were said about the company that weren't true and weren't nice. And, um, you know, I let down a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of people, not everybody in the state, certainly, but a lot of people in the state supported us. And I was really disappointed that we that we couldn't get it done. 
So it was tough. And at the same time, we have, you know, just phenomenal memories of Hawaii. We, st we still go back there. Um, so, you know, with time, the sort of the pain has dissipated and, and I'm able to just appreciate what's great about Hawaii. No, that's great. That's great. I, I, uh, I really enjoyed meeting you, Eric. And I felt, I felt this, that if, if somebody was going to come in as a, an executive to uh, acquire um, a company, a large company, maybe the largest company in the state, it should be somebody like you. Um, that's the way I felt about it. I still feel that way. And I wonder, I wonder if there's any possibility that at some time in the future, uh, this might all mount up again either uh, in, you know, uh, for Nextera or some utility company like Nextera or for some company that you lead? Um, well, uh, thank you, Jay. And, um, you know, it's, it, it's a consolidating industry. There are probably half as many utilities today as there were 20 or 30 years ago. Um, so, you know, um, I guess anything's possible. I think, you know, for ourselves in Hawaiian Electric at this point, we're very much focused elsewhere. And I, you know, I, 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 I don't see that in the cards, uh, but who's to say, you know, forever that, you know, nothing can happen. My, my own experience was, you know, one of the things I learned is um, Hawaii likes local businesses and Hawaii, you know, people in Hawaii, really the majority of people in Hawaii, as you know, as you both know, um, they really mistrust mainland corporations. And so when you're coming from the mainland, you're starting in a hole. And, um, uh, and, and the utility is super important to the state. And people know that, right? It's the most essential of essential infrastructure. So, you know, I, I wouldn't say, I'm not talking about for myself or ne next era. I think we've all moved on. But, but I, I wouldn't say nothing could ever happen with Hawaiian Electric. But I think there's a very good chance that, that they're going to be an independent company for a very long time. Well, query, you know, uh, you know, that's that's kind of an uphill thing in the national consolidation process. I mean, I, as I see it, and I'm interested in your comment on it, is um, you know we're in a national consolidation, as you said, um, of utilities, a, a, a transformation in some ways, um, and and we're also uh, you know in a time when. Um, the technology is changing. I guess that's part of the transformation. And in a time, in a time when um, COVID is transforming our society in general, and so there must be all kinds of changes going on nationally uh, that bear on on this on this kind of issue. That your business is in in change. It's it's changing right now as we speak. Can you talk about that? Well, I mean, that's certainly true. You know, utilities um, as essential infrastructure, we've, we've all continued to operate um, throughout. And so like for myself, I, while I work from home, a lot of people from our company work at home most of the time. We, we have a lot of employees who, who need to be out in the field or, or need to be at their jobs. And the safety, you know, keeping those employees safety, safe is paramount and more difficult. And so um, like any business um, or, or like any family right now, we're, we're all very focused on safety. Um, you know, that said, I think utilities are very robust um, to different economic environments. And I think the utility sector overall, and this is, you know, is true of Hawaiian Electric or Next Era as it, as it is in, of any of them, um, you know, have held up very well. So, so I don't think, you know, that alone is not, I don't think changing the dynamics of, uh, you know, the strategic outlook for the utility sector so much. It's just a challenge we need to work through now. Well, you know, the, the, the economy is, um, I mean, it, it's still teeter-totter. We don't know which way it's going to go. Powell the other day said, oh, it'll bounce back. But, you know, there are those economists that say we're in line for a serious depression. And depressions are not good for utility companies, uh, nor are they good for the price of oil, for that matter. Um, and I wonder, you know, how a utility company, how the industry uh, plans to deal with right now an unknown level of recession or depression because if if you know if we go into a depression people are not going to turn the light switch on and so you don't need you don't need to have that much uh, generating power um and uh, you will have less revenue and that sounds like uh, it's it's a challenge how do, how does the industry deal with that well i'm glad you're not talking to our stockholders because they they don't do it quite that bearishly 
Uh, but, you know, I think, uh, first of all, I, I think it's, it's probably true that electricity consumption was growing during the Great Depression. But that's, that's just a quirk of the time that the electricity business was in its infant, infancy and, and uh, you know, the, it, electrical penetration was, was happening in our society. But I think more broadly, you know, I think the last thing or near the last thing people are going to not buy in, a, in an economic downturn is electricity. They may have trouble paying their bills, and a lot of customers are having trouble paying their bills right now. That's a concern. Um, but ultimately, I think what you typically find is that is that the regulators ensure that that does not jeopardize the financial health of the utility because that would be, you know, against the best interest of everyone. And so I think it's a, it's quite a recession or, dep or even depression resistant business. And I think you know, really, if you if you look at how investors look at it, it supports that. I mean. Utility valuations have come off a bit, um, but they've held up better than other sectors. You know, utility uh, earnings revisions in, in terms of you know their outlooks going down uh, has been less than than other sectors, and also the, the debt markets are open to utilities. So one of the ways that utilities have responded to this environment and thinking about some of the worst case scenarios that you're describing is actually to to tap into the, the bond markets. You know, these are typically investment grade rated companies. And um, they have, you know, preserved access to the bond markets, even when, you know, those bond markets have been quite volatile for others. So, you know, it's, it's, I won't say it's, this is nothing uh, from a financial point of view or an economic point of view. Of course, it's not. This is a big deal, uh, not to mention the health aspects of it. But I think the utility business is holding up pretty well. You know, we had Peter uh, Rossick of Alliant Electric. You, you must have dealt with him while you were yeah. here good guy uh, on the show last week. And one of the subjects of discussion was, you know, how, how people, how lifestyles have changed and what are people doing? Well, you know, they're, they're on the internet more at home um, and they're watching television a lot. And to do that, you really have to have electricity in your house. And if you didn't have electricity in your house, your life would really be, you know, troublesome. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to do the things that the, the remaining things you can still do. So I think, I think that must be part of this whole uh, formula going forward. But I, I wanted to ask you, you know, there, there was talk, I, I'm afraid I don't know the answer, there was talk about uh, the federal government as part of the CARES Act giving, giving support uh, aid to the utility industry. Has that happened? Should it happen? Uh, what's, what's the need? What's the, what's the fact? You know, I think uh, you asked Commissioner Potter that last week, and um, I, I have to say I, I have not heard that. Um, I, I don't think there's anything that's applicable to our company. Um, I don't want to say that shouldn't happen because there, there may be some good ideas people have, but I would say overall, the, you know, the utility business is a pretty robust business. And, um, you know, I think most utilities are, are, you know, are struggling through, you know, with safety and, um, we you know, worry about not just the employees, but employees worrying about their families. So, you know, we're not immune to what's going on, but I think, you know, economically we're fine. Oh, good. Marco, you have questions? Always. I knew that. Eric, if, if someone, let's say that our folks at uh, DBED, Department of Business, Economic Development and Tourism, were to find a, a, a non, previously unknown stash of money to commission a manual, a primer, and they were to go to, to you, Eric Gleason, and say, you've had quite the experience in your efforts with NextEra to buy one of the oldest, most venerable companies in the state, and commissioned you to write a manual in terms of do's and don'ts. Now that you have had the years in the trenches in Hawaii, and now you've had several years to, to recuperate, so to speak, what are some of the, the top brow, high, high priority bullet points that would make up your executive summary for that manual for those who foolishly or bravely something in between want to try again at some point, which they will as sooner, sooner yeah. or later, somebody from outside will want to, to go after a, one of the jewels in the Hawaiian business crown. So what comes to mind? Yeah. So this is a manual on, on buying a utility in Hawaii. Well, not necessarily just the utility, but- I'm not sure anyone would buy that book from me. 
I would. <laughs> oh, I would. you'd be surprised, and, Eric. And if they would, I probably have some other things I want to sell them. <laughs> what would? Well, you know, I actually thought about writing a book. It it wasn't serious. It was playful. Well, the fun part was to think about what the title would be. Uh, you know, how not to buy a utility. Um, so. Uh, look, I, clearly I am not someone to give, to give any, any lessons or dispense any wisdom on that. Um, but you have wounds, Eric. You, know, you have, I you do have, have wounds. Look, You've look, learned you're a bright guy. Come on. I'm trying to decide what to say and what not to say. Listen, I do have a lot of thoughts on this subject. Um, you know, honestly, I, 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 I come back to, I, I think you have to start by why didn't the merger happen? And, uh, you know, there were a lot of, a lot of things that were talked about and a lot, a lot of issues people raised. Um, I think in the end, you know, 80, 20, I think for most people, it was about, uh, it was about two issues. It was a trade off of two issues. Um, one is I think people really do. And I, I know this, I've seen the polling, the majority of people in Hawaii, don't trust mainland corporations and they would prefer for the, you know, the utility to be, as much as possible locally owned and controlled. I think that's just a, an inherent um, feeling in Hawaii. And, and by the way, I, you know, I have a lot of sympathy for that because I'm, you know, I have some familiarity with the history here in Hawaii, so, or in Hawaii. So that's one side of it. And that was clearly, there was something that was gonna be given up there. And then, you know, the other side of it is, uh, at least in this particular case, there was the prospect of, um, you know, of saving some money off your bill. And I think um, while, you know, people in Hawaii, when they're polled about what's important for them about, about energy, they cite cost as the number one thing, or at least they used to, don't know now. Um, you know, when it came down to it, the cost thing, and this is me rationalizing, because I don't really know. We didn't really poll, like, how do you view this trade-off between cost and local? But I think in the end, people knew they would be giving up some local ownership and control, and they couldn't really trust some mainland corporation to give them any cost savings. And so they were happy for it not to happen. I think that's the reality uh, for, for the, you know, for the man in the street. And so I, I think that's um, a very difficult thing to overcome unless you have strong political leadership that sees past that. And of course, in this case, the political leadership actually was more concerned about the local ownership and control. And so uh, it's very, very difficult to overcome that. So probably my advice would be, unless you have very strong political leadership uh, behind a transaction that fundamentally, you know, can deliver some good things for Hawaii, don't try it. Not, not in the utility business. It's too sensitive. No, the leadership was going the other way. Um, I mean, you know, for example, one of, correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the elements uh, that you saw that uh, Next Era saw was the possibility of LNG, at least as a bridge, a bridge fuel at least. And indeed, that's happening all around the country. May I say it's happening all around the world. Um, but the governor, the governor said no on both counts. And uh, that, that, that's not the kind of leadership that can, that can allow for a deal. Yeah, I mean, LNG wasn't our idea. We, we you know, it was, uh, you know, Hawaiian Electric actually originated that, but we could have helped them do it. Um, but, you know, obviously the governor wasn't interested. And so that wasn't going to happen. But, you know, I think the merger was more, was about more than that. Um, but I think at the end of the day that my sense is, and it's hard to know for sure exactly, you know, Governor Ige's issues, because, you know, he said different things at different times. I'm not sure we really know exactly what his thinking was. But, uh, you know, the fact that we weren't, the fact that we were a mainland corporation did, did seem to factor into it based on some things he said. Marco? Over the past, geez, I don't know, 10 or 20 years, I've been in Hawaii now full time, about 20 years. There's been discussion from time to time about interlinking the islands with a submarine cable, power cable, so that you could conceivably have a big wind farm on Lanai, Molokai, geothermal on the big island, and essentially interconnect all the islands. And there's been millions spent on studies and so forth. Uh, first glance, it would seem that it would make sense, practically speaking, over time to have an interconnected state electrically 
as you have an interconnected U.S. mainland, east, east, west, north, south, transmission distribution. What's your take, Eric, in terms of the feasibility, doability, possibility of said submarine power cable? Well, first of all, I have to, Jay, Jay, I think, doesn't remember, but actually the first time we ever spoke was in 2013, and he called me and wanted to get me on the show, and I think it was Skype at that time, and I was a technophobe, so, you know, I'm like, I don't know about that, um, but it, that was a while ago. So, actually, the idea goes, you know where the idea originates, Marco? Uh, Jules Verne? Uh, well, you're close in time. It was actually King David Kalakawa and Thomas Edison at a meeting in New York in 1870 something, I think, um, maybe the eighties. So is it, is it a, is it a technically viable thing? Yes. Um, could it make economic sense? Yes. Do I think it will ever happen? No. And, and the, the reason for that is, um, you know, it would be controversial. And I think it's very difficult to get multi-year capital projects done in Hawaii if they're controversial. Yeah, the other element on that, uh, yeah, we, we talked and um, I, I, I supported that also um, out of Lanai, um, but that, uh, you know, as it, a subculture point in Hawaii, each island has its own subculture. It, ha it has its own identity and there's not, a, there's not really a lot of collaboration between the islands. Yes, it's a state, but it's a state of islands rather than an island state. And so, uh, for example, and, and this is so close in concept, um, that those forces stop the super ferry from coming here. Um, those forces have, have prevented the islands from collaborating on so many things which would happen if they were, you know, all one one piece of land, and um, I think I, I I totally agree. I don't know if that's what you're saying, Marco, but I I totally agree that it's doable, and it should be done, but that it won't be done because of those political cultural considerations. Yeah. And on the mainland, there are cables everywhere, isn't it? Well, I wouldn't say that we, we so uh, actually my business, we, we own one, which is uh, a 53 mile undersea cable that, that supplies 40% of the power in San Francisco. So I'm very familiar with, with you know, how they work. And that's the only one of its type on the West Coast. The, the type of cable that, that if you were gonna do one in Hawaii, you would have done is very similar to this cable uh, we call Transbay in California. And then there are several on the East Coast that are comparable, and then many in Europe, and, and as well as Asia, Australia have some as well, uh, but, but many in Europe to, to, you know, to interconnect across the various uh, seas, different countries. Have you uh, seen or heard of Michael Moore's uh, new and uh, less than wonderful movie about uh, the environment and, and energy? It's called The Planet of the Humans. And it runs, uh, it runs uh, renewable energy down in every way <laughs> you can think of. It's very well, interesting. Well, I, I, I don't know if I can watch that, but maybe I'll, maybe I'll watch the trailer. <laughs> Marco, have you seen it? I have. I have. And uh, once we've all seen it, maybe we can discuss it uh, then. But uh, in the minutes we have, uh, I wanted to ask you, Eric, what do you think are the, the biggest juiciest challenges that we face in Hawaii regarding our energy present and our energy future. What do you think, uh, to distill it down to, to less than a handful or even two or three points, what do you think the biggest challenges are that we face and do we have much hope, should we have much hope of doing a better job uh, with these challenges? Yeah, I don't know if I'm, I'm probably not the right person to speak to challenges today. Um, um, you know, I think over the long term, over the next couple of decades, I think there are, to me, there are probably three big challenges. Uh, one is high renewables penetration. It, it's easy to, to, to contract, to buy or build renewables, but when you get to a higher and higher percentage, once you get over about 50%, um, it gets increasingly difficult to manage and more expensive. And so 
you know, in the years to come, not now, but, you know, 10 years or so from now, it'll be interesting to see how, how Hawaii, how Hawaiian Electric deals with that. Um, I, I think another one is, is hurricanes. Uh, I'm, I, you know, I live in Florida, uh, our company, Florida Power and Light deals with hurricanes. I, you know, had a Cat 5 hurricane coming my way last year that was, you know, get, you know, supposed to impact us and then, you know, fortunately turned north. Uh, this is a scary time. It seems like storms are becoming bigger and, and, and more common. And, um, you know, I've kind of, from, from what I watch in Hawaii, it's kind of a similar story. And so, uh, you know, you think about what Aniki did to Kauai, it's, it's very scary what, what could happen from a hurricane. So that, that's one. I, I just think that problem is not, is not getting better. And I think the other thing is costs, you know, um, integrating those renewables, uh, preparing for hurricanes, hardening your system for hurricanes, and then keeping the cost down are three are going to be three big challenges for Hawaii and Hawaiian Electric. And you know, I'm a big fan of of that company and and the team they have there. And you know, I know they're doing a lot of the right things. And you know, I I expect the best you know from from them and for Hawaii. But I think those are the challenges. And I think there's probably you know if you compare the level of if the degree of difficulty that Hawaiian Electric has on those three issues, um, really, I think there's no one else in the industry that has the challenge that they have. So they've got a lot on their shoulders. Hmm. What about uh, national national policy, national trends in renewables? <laughs> it seems to me there was a time when when people, and I mean everyone. Uh, we're more excited about renewables than they are now. Maybe it's the administration, uh, maybe it's Congress. Um, and I just wonder how you feel about whether the federal government could do more, should do more uh, to encourage, to incentivize, to move us further, faster on renewables. You know, this might surprise you. I mean, we're, you know, we're, as, a, as you probably know, we're, we're a very big renewable energy company. I mean, we're, we're the largest one in the world. It's, it's, it's a big business for us. But even with that, um, we, we are fine with, um, you know, tax credits being phased out as scheduled. Um, our view is renewable energy is, has become extremely cost competitive with, with you know, conventional fossil and nuclear uh, fuel plants, and we're ready for for renewables to compete without without the tax credits, and uh, which are all going to roll off by the middle of by the middle of this decade. And uh, we we're, they're so you know they're they're getting so low cost and you know in in more competitive markets. I mean Hawaii is a vertically integrated market; it, it doesn't quite work this way. But you know in other markets in in North America, we're able to actually compete head to head with with these older plants and. You know they're having trouble staying viable, so so we feel really good about the future just based on economics. You know, then obviously there's individual states that have policies that support, like like Hawaii, have policies that support uh, even more renewables, and you know economics might might dictate. Obviously that's fine with us. Uh, with you know if there if there's a Biden administration, might we have that at the national level? You know we may, or at some point we may. I think I don't know if I don't know if I would agree that. Uh, you know, aside from the Trump administration, clear, clearly the president has a ha, is not a huge fan of renewables. But I think aside from him, I don't think the national poli politics have really gone against renewables. But I, I feel like one thing that has happened is there's more consensus around climate change and that we need to address it, even amongst many Republicans. And so that leads me to be optimistic that, you know, maybe over time there'll be some helpful federal policies as well. Hmm. well thank you, Eric. Okay, uh, we're almost out of time, uh, Marco. So it's uh, it's for you to ask a, a last and very uh, important, profound question, and and then uh, summarize. Can you handle it, Eric? Uh, probably not, but let's go for it. <laughs> well, I wanted to to note that I remember one of the criticisms uh, against Florida Power and Light and Xterra back in 2015, 2016 it was somehow they hadn't gone for far enough or fast enough with renewables. And I want to do a shout out to, to Eric and Jim Robo and everybody there, to your companies that uh, from what I can tell over the past handful of years, that it's, it's significantly accelerated. I mean, it's not that you weren't doing nothing, so to speak, prior to, to the dance with Wine Electric, 
But from what I can tell, I mean, and one of the things you guys were saying, hey, look at what, look at everything that we're going to do. Look at everything on our board, so to speak. And, and you, in fact, you collectively have followed through with that, which I think is, you know, is kudos to you all for doing that in terms of pioneering lower and lower costs with both solar, battery storage, and so forth. So well done uh, for your team there, Eric. And uh, yeah, I mean, lots of other questions to ask, but I think I'll just uh, close by expressing my my thanks and gratitude for you being on the show with us today. And, uh, and whenever and Eric and I talk, whether it's on the phone, via text, uh, email, we meet sometimes in San Francisco, we meet in Waikoloa on the Big Island, and it's always a great pleasure for me to spend time with you, Eric, uh, in whatever medium, whether remote, electronic, or in, in person. So I hope to see you in uh, and, uh, and Pippa, before too long, on uh, your favorite of the Hawaiian Island chain. It's true. <laughs> Thanks, Marco. Thanks, Jay. Thank, thank you, Eric. Uh, Eric Gleason, uh, Next Era Energy. Thank you so much for joining us today. Aloha. Stay well. And uh, you know, when you're not eating and drinking in the restaurant, yeah, you can wear your mask. Yeah. But I like Aloha. to be there. I like to be there. <laughs> Aloha, Eric. <laughs>